Hi, I'm Aaron Barnes, and this is The Bigger Picture. We took a brief hiatus to handle some business overseas, but we're back to get right back to it. Today, we're talking about American surgeon and civil rights activist, Louis Tompkins Wright. Wright was born in LaGrange, Georgia, just before the turn of the 20th century. His biological father was a physician-turned-minister who died shortly after his birth, and his mother, a sewing teacher, remarried with a physician. His stepfather's influence, along with the legacy passed down from his biological father, led Lewis on a path to become a renowned surgeon. He graduated from Clark Atlanta in 1911 and got his medical degree from Harvard just four years later where he graduated fourth in his class. During his time at Harvard, he became a civil rights activist. He missed three weeks of medical school to join the NAACP in protest on the birth of a nation, a movie that glorified the Ku Klux Klan's violence against blacks during the Reconstruction. He would continue his involvement with the NAACP until his death. Side note, have you seen Nate Parker's Birth of a Nation? So it's a remake on the old movie that details the life of American patriot Nat Turner. Not all American slaves went along quietly. There were many who rebelled, and Nat Turner was just one of the most successful and feared rebellion leaders of them all. And his story is definitely integral to the story of American history. Anyway, after medical school, Wright served his country as a lieutenant in the American Medical Corps during World War I. While serving in France, Wright introduced an intradermal vaccination for smallpox and was awarded the Purple Heart after a gas attack. After his service, Wright migrated to New York City, where he became the first black police surgeon and first black chief surgeon of Harlem Hospital. Wright was especially sensitive to the dehumanization of black people in America. He practiced medicine alongside surgeons who viewed black health as a race issue, separate from a global health issue. And I know there are varying opinions on whether or not blacks and whites should have remained segregated or integrated. Honestly, that deserves its own focused discussion. However, one area in which segregation definitely favored the majority was in healthcare where nearly everyone and everything else in America was segregated, Wright championed the idea that black people's health should be treated with equal care and equal standards as the majority. There were plans to provide substandard medical education institution and facilities which Wright opposed. He was adamant against experimenting with black lives while the healthcare system in black communities caught up to modern standards of the time. If this all sounds obvious, you have to realize he said this in 1938, six years after the start of the Tuskegee experiments where they knowingly withheld treatment from hundreds of black people with syphilis just to see if anything different would happen. Wright's healthcare ideology aligned with integrationists simply because he didn't want to see what would happen with black lives while their healthcare institutions lagged behind others in quality and technology. Wright was one of the brightest medical minds of the 1900s and a fierce civil rights activist. His research on antibiotic treatment, cancer, chemotherapy, head injuries, and bone fractures is chronicled in leading medical journals. For his contributions to society at large and the medical field specifically, the Harlem Hospital Library was renamed in his honor. This and his two daughters, also physicians and researchers, carry on his legacy and demonstrate how Louis T. Wright helps us see the bigger picture. Thanks for watching.